There is a life force, a vitality, an energy, a quickening, that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will not exist in any other medium, and it will be lost. The world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is, nor how valuable, nor how it compares to the expressions of others. It is your business to keep it yours, clearly and directly, to keep the channel open. You do not even have to believe in yourself or your work. You have to stay open and aware to the urges that motivate you. Keep the channel open. No artist is pleased. There is no satisfaction whatever at any point. There's only a queer divine dissatisfaction. Blessed unrest keeps us marching and makes us more alive than others. Martha Graham. That quote inspires me a lot. Came to me last year through a friend, and the more I read it, the more profound it's become to me. So much so that I've decided to take inspiration upon it and almost see it like a prayer in my life. Thinking about all the different parts of it has really uh, opened my eyes and allowed me to make some of the best work I've ever had. Stuff that I'm proud of. Although I'll never be pleased, stuff that I, I'm proud of. I want to introduce you to the channel. This is a new show that we're airing for the first time. And part of the name was inspired by that quote, to keep the channel open. I'm going to have my co-host come out here, who's my first guest, in a minute, in a minute <clears throat> and we're going to get a chance to know each other. I have a lot of questions for him that I'm curious uh, to see the answers for, and I'm hoping he has some questions for me. We're doing this here live at uh, the Riverside Studio. It's a historic building built by the late Bruce Goff. And it just feels very fitting for what it is that we're trying to do with the show, as well as thinking about the concept of the channel and keeping it open. So as you listen to this or view it from wherever you are, I encourage you to think about those words and see how they might apply in your life. But most of all, make sure that you keep the channel open. Now, I'm going to bring out my first guest, and my only guest for this show. His name is Farrell Dixon. Uh, Farrell has become fairly known in our town for a magazine, an online publication that he puts out, uh, called A Slut. Tulsa backwards, kind of a naughty word. He's a little bit of a naughty boy sometimes. Um, yeah, so we're going to have Farrell Dixon. He's an incredible human being. He's been around the world. He speaks Chinese. Um, he survived in America as a person who has melanin. So with that, I want you to give a warm welcome for the one and only Farrell Dixon. got a microphone there hello how are you pretty good how are you doing i'm doing good i'm doing good here we are on the first episode of the channel yeah um yeah i'm excited to get into some get into some things yeah so far i'm stoked to have you on the show uh you probably don't know that you are one of the people on my list uh people i try to hang out with a lot but don't get to hang out with that much is that because you're cooler than me what do you guys hear this guy <laughs> no uh I, every time you hit me up i really am doing something it, it, it happens all the time so what, what, is, be what like, was the last thing i hit you up and what were you doing you hit me up about something and then you were like you're like come to the parlor i'm doing this and i was like i'm in texas and you were like you're always not here 
Like you're always doing something. Yeah. And then you literally said that, are you too cool for me? <laughs> well, I mean, you're clearly doing stuff. What were yeah. you doing in Texas? Um, I was doing a research trip um, for the A-Slut store. A-Slut store coming soon. Get into it. Uh, it's going to be young adult fashion. Um, you know, something that the community is really missing because I can never find. Adults? What do you know about young adults? I don't think I know a whole lot about young adults. <laughs> really? I don't know. I'm not really a young adult anymore. Hmm. You get like amnesia as you grow up. I feel like I'm like perpetually like 17. Yeah, I get that from you. <laughs> yeah, it's just I'm just there, you know? They, di they didn't crush me. Yeah. So like how, how have you managed to maintain that? Like how have you not... Why haven't you grown up? How hmm. are you still in Neverland? <laughs> Psychedelics. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, are you kidding though? Because I don't think you're kidding. I don't. I don't do that stuff. Okay. I'm a Christian. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Could you? What's your favorite Bible verse? The one. The one. Just any For Bible God verse. So just anything the about earth. the Bible at all. Just anything Christian. You're a Christian. For God so loved the earth that He gave. Or no, that Jesus wept. That's a good one too. I, are you really a Christian, bro? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you I know. Hope, I hope. I mean, you you have faith then. I like totally really, have like faith. all jokes aside, are you actually like a Christian? Yeah, I love Jesus. Um, I love Gandhi. Were you, were you grow? Did you grow up religious? Yeah. Well, I think like growing up in the Bible Belt as a queer person, right? Like, I think my take on faith and like faith systems too. It's like geographical because like if we were in the Middle East, more than likely we'd be predominantly Muslim, right? And so I think whoever that person is, that's like, like your channel, like if it's like Buddha or Allah, I think it all gets you to the same place. Mm. And so you can't really knock people for like what gets them there. But I think what, uh, there is a there. So I never, there you know what I mean? What is like the there for you? How would you describe the there? Hmm. Just kind of like a knowingness, you know, and like faith, because I'm I don't really have that, so like I don't really, really know. No. Huh. No. For a, a good chunk of my life, I've identified as an atheist. Really, yeah, I grew up in a very extreme religion. Uh, I I consider it extreme, uh, the Unification Church, and my family believed that Reverend Moon was the second coming of Christ, that he really was the Messiah in the flesh, and that through certain ceremonies and ritual, rituals, you could purify your bloodline. It goes back to their theology. Um, I left that church and totally like religion and faith entirely. So, uh, in 2014, but I'm, I'm open now that quote has kind of made me think about the channel and what it is and all that. But, but I want to, I'm curious to know more about your faith. Do you go to church? No. Like, like uh, what is your, how does your faith work in your life? Like what is, give me an example. Like what does it look like? Do you pray? Do you hear something from God or? Yeah, I pray and meditate. I think I'm kind of like a. I would say I do believe in like Christianity, but ultimately I feel like I'm a secular humanist, you know? Mm. I think it's more so kind of whatever you put out into the world, you know? Like What about you, your, parent, you your, make your you make your own reality, you know what I mean? I kind of do. And you I, I want to say I know what you mean, but I want you to define that. What does that mean? What do you mean by that? You make your own reality. I mean like you're either like you're either co-creating with reality or like you're like a victim of it i think like a lot of people feel like circumstance happens Could to you give them. me an example of like a specific time somebody who's the kind of person you're thinking about give me an example of that hmm. it's not even a person it's just like, like a moment what was something that happened recently in your life where somebody was not co-creating their 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 uh would you say universe or existence reality i mean i see it all the time you know like People don't want you to like step out of the box, like, and it's reinforced by like you know get a job, go to college. Did you go to college? <laughs> yeah. Do you have a job? Yeah, but I work for myself, and like, I would uh, I realized that like kind of the nine to five is is fucked up, and I hate it so much. I used to actually work at city council, and I'd go in my office and cry what was every your day. What? <laughs> Hold on. Isn't that sad? You worked at city council. I would go council. cry, y'all. Are you going to cry today? No, I just want to connect with them. I'm like, I'd be in tears, y'all. That's why you have to follow your heart. 
Okay, so we talked, we covered psychedelics. We've talked about Jesus a little bit. Well, we didn't talk about Jesus, we talked about Christianity. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? I love Jesus. Do you? I don't, I don't really have a whole lot of feelings towards Jesus. I don't think that he died for our sins. I don't believe in heaven. Yeah. That's what atheists. I'm gonna get you. you, you I'm gonna get you saved. Like, we don't believe it. When you die, nothing happens. That's my belief. Okay, that's it's terrifying. It's really. Not, it genuinely isn't like a fun thing. It's not like a. Oh, I get to snort coke now and not feel guilty because I'm an atheist. That's not why people pursue it or believe it or find it. I don't know if I pursue. I don't get get on like. There's no such thing as God. There's no such thing as God. I don't believe in ghosts. Good night. I don't do that. I just genuinely don't believe there's fucking. I don't believe there's anything. Wow. Like genuinely believe when you fucking die, it's over. You're just dead. You're just biology. Like you're a f- chemical soup full of shit <laughs> that's just bubbling and boiling, and neurons are firing, and electricity's happening, and calories are burning, and we call that consciousness. And I think grasshoppers have it, worms have it. Obviously, we have it. You know, some people are like the universe has it, and for the longest time, I've been irritated by that because I'm like, no, there's not. It's just your perception of it. So I want to know if. D- your experience of Jesus Christ or God or religion or faith or whatever, how would you define it? What do you feel like? What does it feel like for you? Kind of back to what we were talking about earlier. It's like, I just believe in like this sort of inner knowingness that things will always work out. Mm. And I don't know if like, if you're if an atheist, if you chalk it up to like faith or like God or the universe, I think God, universe, Jesus, whoever, I think they're like interchangeable uh, mm-hmm. meanings but um, yeah I really think it's about uh, having faith because it's like so many times in life there have been just like horrible circumstances and like could you give me one they example always just, what, what was a recent or a horrible one that comes to mind <sighs> they haven't happened as much it's, has well, somebody busted up your car oh my god yes can we talk about see, that see because I'm really a positive fucking person and I'll hold on to shit and y'all need to learn that. Let it go and let God. Okay? But yeah, so I went to go drop off my friend Tizzy, T I Z Z I, no Y. Shout out to her. But um, she was having a bad day. I went and brought her some bread pudding <laughs> from Nola's. Um, she's her favorite. And so I ended up parking in her apartment. <sighs> this story is just tragic. Why do you bring this up? That's You're what we do sick. on the channel. We're going to go deep. So <laughs> I told you, you can cry, by the way, if you do. And I have a tissue here. It's real. It's not just a prop. Oh, nice. Yeah. I might need that. Um, yeah. So I park my car and then I, I, I end up hanging out there and I fall asleep and wake up. Wait, you fall asleep in the car? No, I- inside of Tizzy's apartment. Okay. So I come outside and she's like, bro, what the fuck is this? And so <laughs> there's a note on the front of my car. And it's like, it says, (laughs) I'm laughing because it's so absurd. It's like, how the fuck do you, where do you come up being like this? The note on my car says, um, like, this time I only sliced your car. I only scratched your car with my knife and rammed it with my car. Next time I'll take your tires. Don't park here next time. And I'm like, it's 7 a.m., sis. (laughs) <laughs> Who is doing this shit? I'm trying to go to Double Shot, get me a little little coffee, get my day started. And my shit is sliced up. I bet she's an atheist. Okay. Void of faith. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about the car. So she just left a note. What else did she do? Did you leave like a little like makeup kiss on it or I just so no, far? I know my car, a car my car looks like a crushed up Coke can. Damn. She she rammed that shit. Cause you know, it's a Honda. You know, Hondas they they can take they they can deal with a lot, but like they're not the strongest. Mm. You know? They'll keep going, they'll persevere. Yeah, you know, they're like a little wind up toy. You just yeah. Take it back to Honda. So she rammed your car. Rammed it, cut it from side to side with a knife, and carved don't park here into the front of my car. Damn. Savage. So well, let's talk about faith. So how do you overcome, you t- we talked about terrible stuff happens in your life. That's where we got, why we talked about the car. There's an example. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm so, I'm, I'm at the certain level of faith 
where like I, I like to embrace like sort of delusion now, like not like delusional, but like, you know, um, fantastical delusion. And so I, I, I don't know, I was definitely pissed off at first, but after I like, you know, taped my car up, I was just like, wow, look at this car. It's so emblematic of right now in my life. Like, you know, like. In what way it's emblematic? Are you taped up and beat up? Did somebody <laughs> ram you from behind? Cut yeah. Your shit up, I'm bro. just like, damn, the times. You know what I mean? But <laughs> like, you, can't, you can't get too personal about it. To your it. body, to your spirit, in what way? Just, yeah, just like right now, I feel like. Um, <laughs> I feel like uh, when I was crying in my office, that was only two years ago, you know? Mm. Like, Acelet's only three years old. Wow. So, like... In I, my I, mind, it feels like such an, an uh, institution. Yeah, right? Yeah. But it's, like, I made that pivot, and, like, I just don't take it personal. Like, that person must have been hurting so bad to, like, fuck my car up at 8 a.m. Like, what? where were you going? What was your day? Like, I just hope she had a better day. Because mm. I'll get... Like, honestly, I'll, she probably felt so alive doing that to you yeah and she it's probably like, was just like yeah i'm the fucking king of the world after that sick <laughs> at my expense yeah but um i don't know i like cars can be replaced it's just not that deep yeah. but it was that deep to her which yeah. i find scary and that's why i think people need a faith system even if you uh i don't know go on a walk every morning and like look at the ducks or some shit. Like, just have something that you do to where the steam that you let out isn't in moments like that. Mm -hmm. Let the steam out when you're quiet and meditating in the morning mm -hmm. or you're kind of doing more soul-searching work. Because the steam has to come out. It's a byproduct of existence, I think. Mm. You know, like a choo-choo train. So how do you let that steam out? Like I said, meditating, like... Um, just doing work that matters to me, you know? I hate busy work. Mm. So, like, what, what is busy work? Anyway. Just, like, um, like work that you just have to get done, you know? Like, mm. just, like, menial task. Yeah. Like, sometimes menial tasks are cool if it's a part of a bigger picture. But just, like, little minutia constantly. I mean, does anyone like that? Do you like that? No. It irritates me. I hate that stuff so much. That's why you need support. Or use that word instead. Yeah. Not a servant. No servants. Okay. Servant era. I mean, there was a time where people were servants. That's real. real. Like, I have ancestors that were definitely servants. True. Some of them probably got paid. I know some of them did not get paid. Okay. So, Manipulated. Yeah. Whipped and chained. <laughs> Damn. Bro, are, you, are, your, are your ancestors... I'm not from America. Oh, shit. Where are you from? No, I'm fucking with you. Okay. Yeah, Do you have ancestors totally. that came over through the transatlantic slave trade? Yeah. Um, it's like, I'm, very, I'm a very Oklahoma mix. So my family spent like four, year, four generations on the Choctaw Reservation and four in Tulsa and Black Wall Street. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. So wait, as in, are you Choctaw then? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. How does, it, how does that, what's that like? Does that inform anything you do or is it just like... In the same way that people are like, how does your curly hair inform it? You know, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's just, it grows out of my head, bro. Like, does it, is it, is it like a part of your identity? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I feel like I'm in an interesting position as like a black native because black natives are oftentimes like disenfranchised. Um, you have all the boxes ticked other than female. Yeah. If you had them. I guess so. I never thought of it like that. I mean, you could just, like, stun on anybody. Like, don't talk to me about your privilege. Oh, I love that. Give me some more examples. <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't think like, like that. Like I'm gay, I'm yeah. black, and I'm native. Uh-huh. Those are the three I The know. oppression Olympics. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. How do you feel about that? That whole thing. So The fact that you said a, a oppression Olympics, I kind of want to go there. Well, I just find. Well, do you? Let's say you're hiring somebody, right? You get three <laughs> resumes in front. Oh of Jesus! You. Yeah. Okay. You got some res resumes in front of you. Before you read the resumes, would it be important to you to know who, like, the gender, race, and all that kind of stuff about? Not necessarily. Um, even though I, I, I think I tend to kind of, I tend to kind of curate in that way, like. Mm. 
unknowingly you know what i mean like where where things are just kind of naturally diverse it's not like i'm like trying to be the d the diversity equity inclusion person it just kind of happens that way because i have intersectional existence you know what i mean Mm. but i kind of go more so for for like who doesn't i'm gonna play stupid and say i don't know what you mean i mean like i'm i think acelet is a good example like uh, of the way i lead my life like it's just naturally inclusive like small big short tall every color how many like white straight men do you have on your staff that you work with two two how many people do you work with in general God, you're asking too many questions. Oh, it's a talk show. What That's the hell is wrong do? with you? That's what we gotta do. This is called an interview. Hmm. How many, just in general, is it more than 20? Is it less than 20? I'm just like, damn, you really got me thinking. Is it I, more it's, than it's five? Like, it's like around 15. Okay. I just feel like, I, so I feel like, like people are gonna be like, you forgot then. me. People that work, they, well, they provide services. 15 you guys hear him? service providers. Servicers? <laughs> Servi- okay, so out of fifteen people, out of fifteen people, you have two of them that are white straight men. Yeah, most are like the rest is like women and like people of color. Do you think that white straight men should have more opportunities? I really do want to talk to you about this. More, I don't want to hear a more, white straight person talk to me about this. More like, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, like, so let's say, uh, like, do you feel that in, on your staff or the people that you're working with, do you, you said you don't really consider it's not port- important to you. You just inherently tend to pursue people in the diverse category because. I mean, so, they look they like me. You. you know they, what I mean? Yeah, they, they care about you. Well, it's also like we kind of. Your articles. I would imagine a good amount. Yeah. We can move past it. It's a touchy hey, You got me thinking, though. And I'm like, damn. I'm just saying, nobody's looking out for the straights. <laughs> I'm like, well, it sucks to suck. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. That's a joke, by the way. Yeah, jokes. You know, do jokes. people know what humor is out here? I hope so. Please. Are we going to get Please. canceled before we even get started? Please. No, we can't get canceled. We're Christian. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're a mess. You know what? I really take that as a compliment coming from Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good. Yeah. I like this. This is yeah. it's good shit. Yeah. So, um, okay. So I want to I wanna talk to you about your creative process. I know that you're, you studied for graphic design or what did, what, did, what did you go to school for? Um, I went to school for mass communications and graphic design. Okay. Um, fine Which, art degree. So do you have a two, two is that a bachelor's? Yeah, a double, double majored. Double okay. Do you mind if I light a pipe? No, do it. Okay, double Rogue major. State, so where'd you Rogue go to school? State. Did you already say that? I went oh, to Rogers State in Claremore. It okay. Was like, you seem to not be. You don't want to. Are you proud of that? No. Why you? Why are you ashamed of that? I mean, I feel I went to Booker T in high school where I learned Chinese and like all these other beautiful things. You want to hit this pipe? Yeah. And like, I just felt like I was really. Uh, I just feel like I was really gaslit in that fucking school, you know? Gaslit? Yeah. In what way? Well, I, one. And Malcolm X, you were like, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. You know what I'm talking about? There's a moment oh, where yeah, Malcolm totally. X. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like people, like, couldn't comprehend me. Can you believe that people are still racist in America? Yeah, but they were, like, haters because it's like. Or was it about race or do you think it was because you're gay? I feel like it was probably both. Because it's like, I feel like they wanted this, like. To, to process me as like... Did you get anything? It wasn't really running. It was cool. Load you know another one. Yeah. But like, I feel like to process me, they were like, they're yeah, like, they're like, he's better than me, but like, he needs to have a tragic black story. Oh my God. And I'm like, bitch, I go to Europe every summer. You know what I mean? Like, and they just couldn't like process that. I felt like they needed to like know that I had it bad to justify me like winning for them to feel good. Damn. So how like have you sick. confirmed any of that's real and not just in your head? Um, Cause a straight white guy would be like, bro, you're fucking making that shit up. Stop it. Nobody what? told you that. You don't have any proof. You don't have any Ooh. documentation. The, the reason why I don't believe in God is I'm like, we would know, you know, I don't, I believe in germs. We can see it. Ooh. I believe in Venus. I can go take a telescope and see it. 
right? There's no worry about that. It's provable, right? I can go back and find the genealogy that my parents really were, or my ancestors really were slaves. But it, when I go to God, it's like, eh, it's up to you. You just got to know. It's a feeling. So the same thing in your life experience. You're talking about this, this thing in college where you're dealing with racism or what the people would call microaggressions. Yeah. Right? I, and, and, and for some, I'm curious to like, for somebody, so give me some evidence. Prove it to me. Well, I was, I was academically bullied by a teacher, which was a first for me, you know? Do you want to say their name? We've already talked about psychedelics, we just, Jesus. We've said fuck at this point. Like, I mean, like... We'll bleep it out in post. I'm just like, they should just, like... Should the fans get her? <laughs> no, we should not do that. We I'm have like, scruples. I'll we have drop scruples. her name yeah. and her... We're not, we're not going to do that. I'll drop the Addy. Okay, okay. So just, there's a certain teacher. You had a professor. Yeah. And so I'm a double major doing 18 credit hours. I work at a TV station. I work at two TV stations, one off campus, one on campus. Double major, 18 credit hours. That's I was, wait, I was, hold on. Okay. Was, so how many, like how most people. Take so, so let's 15. say, so when did you start, when did you walk into your first class and when did you like have your last class end time? Oh like my 8 God. 9 a.m. Like eight to eight. Shoot. And then I worked eight. on the weekends. And then how much, like, study are you doing in between then? Like, when I have the little... So my school is an hour away from my house, so when I, I couldn't leave campus, so I would have, like, what's the point of coming to Tulsa for an hour? Wait, and you said I gotta, your school's an hour away from your house? Yeah. I would commute every day, too. It was a lot. That's a lot. Crazy. This is what Oklahoma people do to get an education. Okay, you got to fight. Fight tooth and nail. No, I mean, honestly, like, this is the thing that... Th this is a whole different topic, but, like... We, we don't have, we do have some institutions, but if you want to get a mass communication and graphic design degree, I know a few other people in the Tulsa scene that went to the same college you did for that same degree because they, for whatever reason, we can go back on track and talk about your education. So you were worked oh, yeah. really hard in school. Academic, the academic bullying, right? You have a long commute. You're, you're slammed with studying. You've got lectures to go to, labs to do, tests to put down, all this kind of stuff. The stress of being a student. Not everybody's been to college, and it's not, it's not a simple thing to get through. It's not for some people, unless you're straight and white and privileged. I'm kidding. That's a joke. I'm just beating up white guys today. Straight, I like The straight it. ones. The gay ones get a pass, or the non-binary, uh, or the, but the straights, we're after the straights today. Anyway. Get them. Get them. Yeah, so back to, to school. You get this, you're, go, you're pursuing this degree, and I'm saying, give me some evidence of the racism, right? We talked about that. I'm like, prove it to me. Okay. As a skeptic so, who doesn't believe in it. So 18 credit hours, right? That's mm -hmm. six classes. Most people do 12 to 15 credit hours. I have straight A's. Oh, so and you're smart. I have a straight A's and an F in drawing one. Now, an F where, in does, drawing one? where does that make sense? Okay. Oh, shoot. Can you draw? No. Oh, cool. So then you got an F. Come on. If you suck, what are you talking about? Okay, you can't just complain that you got an F in drawing if you suck at it. I mean, like, she didn't make me feel better. And other people sucked as much as me. Bro, okay. So they were also equally bad. Yeah, but they passed. Mm. I just felt like it was one of those things because. I've also always been like very popular my whole life. Yeah. And I'm like, you're a hater, but you're the fucking teacher this time. Damn. Crazy. That's like a drama. That's a literal movie. I'm like, damn, the hater is the teacher. Because if you, I mean, you know, you're not doing shit if you don't have haters. It's just facts. Mm. And like, Hold on. I've Can I have that. a counter to that? Yeah. Uh, what's Tony Robbins? Is he the, the is he the. Tony Robbins, the yeah, one yeah, that yeah, talks yeah. like Tony this. Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins. Does, do you think he has haters? I would say so. Probably. Yeah. So you can even be Tony Robbins and people are still going to hate you. Oh, totally. I, he they're actually like, kind of annoys like, me. why are you so happy with your yeah. life? Those kind of people like that actually do irk me a little bit. Why are you so happy? I don't believe, well, I don't believe in people who don't have certain levels of suffering or strife. When they're just like, it's just, God, it's all, always good. I'm like, bro, what are you on? Like, literally, that's drugs. But there are some people who spiritually are just, I don't know, are they really like that? Anyway, that's a digression. Well, I, I do want to go back to, to your school story. Okay, so you got to draw. You got an F in drawing. Did you retake the class? Yeah, and so I retook it and made an A with my Ooh. same level of drawing skills, but different, different professor. Teacher. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the plot and I, really And I've talked to there. other students of color too that like work with A slut because it's grown and they've told me they've dealt with the same thing from the professor and they were like they were like she was cool at first 
And then, like, I saw what you were talking about. And I'm like, well, this is a person that's, like, a gatekeeper over people, like, moving through their life. In little-ass rural Oklahoma, even. Horrible. Damn. Do you think she, do you, were you out by then? Oh, totally. Do you think that mattered as well? Do you think it was a compound? Like, all those things that get you the quote-unquote, like, woke privileges now were, like, literally the things that were oppressing you? I feel like she Surprise. was, like, I feel like she was definitely on Plot some, twist. like, white woman shit where she's, like, all oh, men fucking hate them. But, like, I'm married and I have three kids. And it's, like, okay, well, like, you're uh, playing into the shit, too. By adding men to the world? But you hate men or yeah. whatever. But, I just remember one time in class too. So I was like, she's such a fucking hater. Like one of my one of my classmates was like, we were talking about Taylor Swift, and I was like, oh my god, I'm going to the to see her in Kansas City. And this other girl was like, me too. We were like, ah. And then she was like, I'm like, damn, you're a hating ass hoe. You're really a hater. For and Taylor- you're supposed to be teaching the kids. It's crazy. Wait, so this other girl was she white? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. But she, the so she, maybe it wasn't race though, because she, she, she could just be a hater. Yeah. But so, so, she still so be the around question, the kids. So we want to. Well, I want to. Uh, we have to get to the bottom of this. All right. I really want to like inspect this. Okay. Was it racism? We need to be able to classify this moment. So you had this bad teacher, right? And earlier we're talking about this. But, the, but other students of color have told me that they've dealt with the same thing from her too. Mm. But how many other students have been like, "Yo, she's a good teacher." Awesome, love her. Like, what if ev- what if she gives and everybody an F? Also, you didn't see the other. I was tests, the only though. black student in the class, and it seems to be that's like the thing. Like, mm. This other student was the only black person in the class, but too. she didn't use like the N word. No. Okay. I get her ass dropped. Okay. What? I just I just want to be clear. So we're setting the like the level of racism here that we're talking about. I think it's like it shows up in microaggressions. I think yeah. more so. Could you give me? Because you can't. Let's you talk can't talk about that, man. You can't outwardly be. This is, this is the thing. I'm really so. I am for the longest time know all about microaggressions because I'm half black. That's interesting. Yeah. Surprise. In what ways do you do you peep, do you peep the microaggressions? Oh, I actually don't get them. Really? Yeah. I get. I am like a daywalker and like you know blade where I can like be black when I want to be and get all the benefits, but also I get to like not have to deal with racism because I'm so light-skinned and I can talk like a white person. And then like, like, oh, you are kind of white. I, I am, I'm both. I guess, yeah, it's you're kind of more like racially race. ambiguous. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's its own thing. It's mixed race. It's, it's, hmm. it's biracial. I, can you fathom he's black and white? Yeah, it's the, you could have, they're not opposite things. Yeah, which is the, which is the crazy thing about racism is you will think in your mind that like you can't also be white and also be black because there there's some kind of opposition there. The surely, surely there's been ways though that maybe you didn't, didn't chalk it up to race, but anyway. But I live with black people, so I see it all the time. Yeah, who are like dark skin? They, I'm like, yeah, that fuck, that's fucking racist. That shit's crazy. Yeah, you know. So like, I always knew what racism was. There's no doubt. It just hasn't hit me. Interesting. Yeah. So you'd never been like had a weird encounter with I the had, police or like. Uh, well, no, no, no. Really? I, the opposite. I had so I have a car, a Corvette, super fast. The thing will do like 200 miles an hour. Just to put it in perspective, like the top speed of your Honda is probably like 120 on when the wind's pushing it. Whoosh. All right, in the direction you want it to go. This thing will do. Not quite double that, but almost twice as fast. So if I'm going at full speed and you're going at full speed, I'll get there like in half the time you would. Cops literally, their cars don't go that fast. And your car is red? And it's red. Yeah, right. right. So like if a cop was to try to pursue me and I had a long straight, I could literally just outrun him. Some bootlegger shit. Hmm. He just, there's nothing he could do. Okay, so imagine that as a police officer when you see a car like that. Like, this dude has power over me in the sense he could just drive it. It's the same. It's not as threatening as a gun, but it, there's usually some kind of, like, I don't know, they bust your fucking balls about it. Usually, cops don't like people in fast cars. That's been my experience. Anytime I show up on a hot rod, and anyway, they pull up to the window. There's young, handsome Truson sitting there, and they're like, oh, I expected you to be, like, an old white guy. What? And, and they're just nice to me. And then I just get a warning. Yeah. And I drive away, and I don't even pay a speeding ticket. In this cool nice. car, yeah. They're just like, yeah. how fast is this thing? This thing is cool. Okay, if I was dark-skinned, they're like, that shit's stolen. Mm. 
Yeah. I haven't had too Who, many... Whose car is this, sir? Who owns this vehicle? Is this your car? Nobody's ever asked that question. It doesn't, I literally dress like this, like some weirdo in this Corvette. They've never doubted it, it's mine. Okay? Mm. And then, like, my black-ass dad in a nice car. Excuse me, sir. Uh, is this your car? Whose car is this? It's like, motherfucker, it's mine. That's racism, right? That doesn't happen to me. I don't, I don't get shit like that. I don't get doors shut in my face because I have white privilege. I'm white. That's what the privilege is. It's a race thing. Hmm. It's literally like, oh, your genealogy. Like, I don't know what the fuck it is. It's some shit we made up. I don't know. It's, it's bizarre. It's confusing. To me, at least. Who really tries, like, get, get to the bottom of it. I want to know. Yeah. You know, like, what's the, let's get down. Let's get, anyway. So you experienced some racism in college. Let's go back yeah, to your story. But see, that's, but that's kind of like, I don't get it that much. Mm. But I have, like, I think it is like a... It's a proximity to whiteness thing. You know what I mean? Like, you would be like Meghan Markle and I'm like Holly Berry. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like they're mixed or something. Could you give me like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, okay, they're mixed or something. Right, right, right. But okay, I feel I see like, the spectrum of you know like, what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah, a color. Like well, also, no, if you want to get technical, there is like a literal ethnic. The thing that's interesting about it is white people are ethnic. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. From a cave? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> racist. Um, no, that's not. That's no, true. I've been is. to the Caucasus Mountains in wow. Georgia. See, there you go. That's where the the people Period. actually come from. I was there. I was like, right? this is where y'all came from. What's, you've been to Europe? Yeah. It's it's something every black person, black American needs to see. Uh, and, then and, they, and they there's another people, part that I'm like, looking to go back to, which I haven't gone to Africa yet, but it's on my <laughs> list. I gotta go to visit it, um, to pay to see both sides. But I think as black Americans, going to Europe is. Really interesting, because then you see where these white people are actually from. Yeah. You're like, holy shit, this is literally where you're really from. I feel like as an American, you, feel, you can get this feeling that white people are like aliens, like an, literally like an alien species that came from like a faraway land and stole us from our like home planet, threw us on this crazy society, and are like, no, you have to live here now, and you're not, we're not going to let you go back. Like that's, then you have to evolve from that and go, well, I can't really go back. It's not possible. Yeah, it's, it's anyway, happening. seeing white people in their indigenous environment is kind of wild. It's trippy. Well, I'm I like, feel Damn, like you I really like, do. You really aren't. Anyway, sorry. That's I just funny. feel like it's more charming over there too. Like I don't know. White people work, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, really though. Like white people will do some crazy shit, man. Yeah. Like they work. You can see their. They have this like mentality. If you look at like go to go to go to r fucking Greece and Rome. Right? They built that shit. Have you been to Rome? That shit's insane. Okay, so I wanted to relate that back to your experience as an artist, as a creative person, right? Earlier on, we talked about your identities, right? And, and being black is one of them. We could, we've had a whole conversation on that. We could clearly have a whole series on it. That must be impacting and influencing your process, your, your, uh, how it's informed your work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I how think, does, I how think does it inform a, your work? I think it's all about like you know, it's about having an intersectional um, identity. So you know, like I love to see like a plus size person in the magazine. Uh, my mom is plus size. I think she's beautiful. Like I like to see different races of people because I have different friends that like I think are beautiful and cool. Like. I don't have like a monolithic existence. And I think that kind of informs my work because I'm not a monolith, I'm so many different things. And I think that's the beauty of life is experiencing all of it. And so being able to wrap that into my work, um, yeah, it's just kind of like echoing my life through it. It's my life's work. Yeah, okay, I wanna ask, I, wanna, I have a, uh, another creative question on that um so what is it that inspires you to make art or to make work to create hmm. what in, what made you want to make the magazine what made you want to make a, a slut is it is it a magazine is that what i should call it yeah okay uh a brand a brand um a channel a brand a channel a show a life an organism I called it an institution earlier. I like that. That was good. What was your question? I'm sorry. 
Uh, what is it that inspires you to make? Like, what is it that that makes you want to do that? Um, I just feel like I, even if I, could, even if like I wasn't doing a slut, I would still have sort of like a a burning desire to make something. Like, I need to like. What is it that like always? Uh, just make what something. is that though? The burning desire. Like some people don't have that, hmm. or maybe they can't relate. Maybe they do have it. I I assume everybody has it, but for somebody who can't relate to what you're talking about um if you're taking pre-workout yeah it's like an internal pre-workout feeling where i'm like oh i have to get this out of me like like energy yeah yeah and so i have to like conduct the energy through something um so if that means like the magazine or like a painting or you know a sculpture just something i have to like put it have to let it work through me i have to let it use me you know? Yeah. That's what we call the channel. Hmm. You need to keep that channel open. Yeah. That's the thing. It's the vitality, the energy, the quickening. Yeah. We'll see. And then what you were saying earlier about faith. I feel like um, our channel, right, like this kind of thing, it can be clogged with life, mm. like sludge through the pipe system, you know? And so I think like having sort of a baseline – knowing that everything will be okay and like if art is your thing that like you're here to do that you know and just do it you know let it out so how do you yeah how do you how do you measure the the stuff that you put out like how do you how, how do you like sift through it or sort it or organize it you talking about the magazine or just like just yeah the just the, the channel it just kind of hits you do you ever feel like you just kind of get bursts of creativity during certain activities? I do. There's this book I read. I forget the name of it. But it talks about how, like, your creative ahas, like, you should pause when you have an aha and then be like, what did I just do? So, like, I've noticed that my ahas come when I'm driving in the car by myself, just, like, going on, like, a little cruise. Or, like, if I'm doing laundry, ahas. Or washing dishes. It's like kind of when my brain is most idle, I'm kind of open. The channel is very open, I suppose. That's like a good, a good adage. Um, yeah. It's interesting. There, there's uh, some scientific research on that about why that is. Because we're very stimulated with phones Everything. and stuff. Yeah. And creativity is, is not a thing. It's not like a receptive thing. It's like an outward thing. Hmm. So, you know versus like listening to somebody it's like speaking and rather than listening you're making stuff it's output outwardly thing i mean that's just how uh, that's how i categorize it yeah input output mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah so to keep that channel open uh, what are what are some of the ways that you keep it clear um since i'm a workaholic i have to make sure i don't overwork myself with the busy work so um having support Right? Yeah. People that just help out. Well, not just people that help out, but like um, even support systems <clears throat> for myself, you know? Like, I won't do this because I know I will feel like this later. Yeah. Uh, boundaries, you know? That allows you to show up better. Um, and if you're not showing up good, like in your life at all, like, look at what's going on with yourself. You know what I mean? It affects your art, it affects your relationships. It just. It's another energy that's a part of the channel, you know? Mm -hmm. Is this, uh, the channel signal fuzzy? Why is it fuzzy? You got some bent ass antennas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So unbend them. Straighten them out. Get a new pair. Yeah. yeah, no, I think that's super poetic. Thank you. Honestly, yeah. It is. So, um, so who do you create for? Um, that's a really good question. So I feel like in this phase of my life, I'm really creating for a community, um, like a community based in Tulsa, but like more so reaching a national audience, you know, um, actually, do you know, or do I know? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Tell me who, you, who, who do you create for? If I'm, I, I feel like. 
Ace Slice becomes such a beast that I feel like I'm like creating to like kind of keep things going. But I kind of miss the days when I was just creating for myself in a sense, because now it's gotten bigger than me. So, um, but I guess honestly, I'm not I'm not being truly true about that either. I do create for myself too in other moments. Like sometimes I'll just like work on something on Photoshop for myself or like I built out this really like neat planner, but it's like, you know, productivity and capitalism, but make it cute, throw it in Photoshop. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. But I just yeah, feel like, yeah, I just yeah. like when you're at a certain level of like uh, producing and creating it, when does it, it, it kind of stops being about you, which is beautiful, but um, yeah, so kind of create for like myself and others to answer your question for yourself and others. So who do you feel like uh, really should, do you, do you feel, how do you, how do you balance that? I guess I'm learning the balance now, you know, like, uh, like I said, Ace is only three years old. So it started as a school project. Um, God, that's a really good question. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know how you find the balance. I'm trying to find the balance, you know? And I'm like, is it is it having all these planners and timers and ding, 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 which drives me nuts. Like, who likes it? Do you guys like it? Do you guys like it? Do you like the planners and timers and the, and the, and the, and the, and the Gmails and the... I mean, it's cool, but like... Drives me crazy. Right? That's. I mean, I it like put me to a point where I, I had to quit a whole career I was on. I was so over the scheduling, the meetings, and the Zoom, and it's miss me with that. I'm good. Yeah, but then it's like when you're truly doing your own work, it's like it it feels better to do those things for yourself, but they still suck. Hmm. Cause like you can't yeah. be, like 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 if someone's talking to you about exhibiting. You can't be unprofessional and fumble the meeting. You know what right. I mean? Or I've done that quite a few times. I feel like I do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you, I'm like I'm actually ha make it like an art of my life. Genuinely, like I feel like I'm so good at. You're like this is my expression. Yeah, it's like it's sometimes I'm just like in awe of how badly I can screw things up. Wow. Yeah. A beautiful mess. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what, man? That's. Maybe it, maybe it's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe we're just going to lean into it. Mm. Like, yeah, man, it's my crazy world because I'm fucking crazy. Wow, I love yeah. that. So, like, if you want to hang out with this guy, like, this is the kind of shit you deal with. <laughs> I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. But you can't be reliable and dependable <laughs> and Mr. Like, yeah. and also crazy. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, you can't be a beast unless you're a beast. Mm. You know, like you, 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 you don't, you don't get both. That's just my. Maybe there's some people they call them unicorns, right? Who have like all the everything. They're like crazy and unique and eccentric or interesting, but also reliable and orderly and conscientious and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But. But I don't know. In some way, it's like part of what I think is romantic about that is the the rock star type thing, is yeah. that they truly are fucking unhinged. They're just like. Bro, I don't care. I just live life as I do because I'm me. Like, I'm me in it, okay? So, like, yes, it's crazy and it's messy, but have you seen what I can do? Yeah. Right? Like, if I'm you're Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you can be wild because you're Hendrix. He can right. get on stage and make it all up for it. And then everybody's like, all right, we'll, we'll put up with him. Well, I guess, like, if, if, if people are <laughs> like that, maybe the good thing is to lean into that sort of, mm. you know. Yeah. I feel like that's But not to your own detriment. Right. I feel like there's some people who that's the who get part. there and they try to lean into that, but they don't have the output to make up for it. Right. Um, you know, you can't just be tr want people to treat you like Hendrix if you don't actually get up on stage and yeah, play the guitar. If you don't pull out that guitar. Yeah. And it's a hit every time. Yes, I'm like some of you people don't like you. You're just at that point. You're just a messy person. <laughs> <laughs> Tighten up. Yeah, man. Yeah. But then again, like we're in the we're in the era of like. Let people do things and don't comment on it. Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, we're very toler- like, we're trying to get toward tolerance, right? We yeah. don't want to be like in a society with intolerance. That's exactly. Right? And we talked a whole lot about that earlier. Yeah, and it's like, but what when does like critique and reflection come into play? Mm-hmm. Or is that just like we're gonna assume everyone's doing that? Yeah, critique. Man, that is a really good. That's so. How do you handle that? I love critique, and I love failure. Like roast me, you know? Mm. Cause like that's how you get better at what you do. Oh my god! Did you play sports or anything? Have you had a coach yeah, before? Yeah, I played. I played like, I played tennis and golf. But did you have a tennis coach or you just played? Yeah. yeah. I I feel like that's where I learned that. Right. It's like you're pushing yourself as hard as you can. You're trying your absolute best. And you're performing, and then the person is their job is just to be like, yeah, but you could do it better. Yeah, I always say fail forward. You know, like. Do you know anything about uh, agile technology methods and all that? No, what's up? Anyway, it's a whole like tech bros know what it is. It's yeah, a whole give philosophy. Give me a little. So the idea is that you start with um, using experimentation and collecting data informs you of trends, and then you pursue those trends. And the way that you do that quickly is by uh, doing a test. You make a prototype, you throw it out there, and you hope that it works. And if it doesn't work, you try to figure out what went wrong, and then you uh, try again. Agile systems? Agile methodology. Agile so that's methodology. So that, that's how Facebook makes Facebook and how they keep making it you know, hopefully more engaging or whatever their goal is. We say better. Their goal is to maintain your attention or any yeah, of those Yeah, keep things, you right? on the app. Right. So... How do they make sure that they succeed at that? Is mm. they, they test, how, what are we doing that's maintaining you on the app? And we just do that. Anyway, there's people who kind of live their lives that way, where you try things, you fail, you learn from it and go, that didn't work. So let's try something else. Yeah. I mean, like, that's how you get better, you know? Mm-hmm. And you can't be so afraid of failure or, like, um, being cringe. You know, like, mm. life really oh. opens up on the other side of you yeah. embracing the cringe. Oh, my God. Embrace yes. the cringe. So what if you look crazy? We all look crazy. Yeah. Like, no, honestly, the best people are the people who can handle cringe. Yeah. Seriously. I like, love like, cringe. Like, the characters that drive me crazy are people who try to be, like, Neo from The Matrix. Where they're just and like, they, oh, I'm just cool all the time, and I don't make mistakes. Like damn! I'm like, come on, bro! I'm like, you are so. You can't, you're lit. not even interesting to watch. I want to see Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Yeah. I like those characters, right? Because they don't have it figured out. They're trying things. But yeah. They, but they can be silly. And I feel like life should be treated the same way. You you got to be able to play your own fool in your life, in your cosmic play. If you can't be your own fool, there's some sort of issue. <laughs> it says a lot on. about how insecure you are. God damn, you really care that much about what other people think of you. All right, yeah. well, we're going to bring it back to creativity because we're, we're going off here. Um, <laughs> we're becoming a whole, we're having therapy. It's becoming a, a, a little sesh. Uh, does your work ever feel insincere? That's a great question. Um, I always try to make things that I think are truly dope. And I think that's what keeps it sincere. Cause I'm like, <laughs> one of my friends in like comments on this, she, she's always like, you say things suck. And like, that's not nice. But I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm like, e- but even with like client work, I'll be like, this is kind of sucks. Like, what were you thinking? <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Cause it's like, if you are projecting a signal or an image or a voice, like, there is like a baseline protocol of how you show up like as the best of that, right? Like Mm. baseline metrics on like, even as simple as principles of design, like it's a baseline of like, Mm -hmm. I've hit all of these. It's like, what does Picasso say? What did he say? He said a lot of things. There's one, there's one quote from him I'm thinking of right now, but I'm like, I'm thinking of like three different ones. Not great artists copy, good artists steal. Yeah, that's Picasso. There's another one. Who is your, who is your, did you take art history? Yeah. Come on. Fucking hell. All right, let's move past it. Um, so, yeah, does your work ever feel insincere? You said you try to make it dope, you know? Oh, okay, this is the Picasso quote. Got it. 
Okay, so you know Picasso, like he he's like he was like a Renaissance ass painter at first, mm -hmm. but it's like it took me. When you say Renaissance, you mean like he did like traditional yeah, Italian like, style, like copying the masters. Realism. It looks like Leonardo da Vinci kind exactly. of exactly. Yeah. Um, he started out as that, and then like abstracted to the point of like the squiggle lines, but he said it took him. It took him, what did he say, like mm. 18 years to learn how to paint like the masters, but a lifetime to learn how to paint like a child. And I'm like, I always want to exist in that place. Like, let's just say like I'm perpetually a child and like I want, I want things that feel cool to me. Like, why are you making it if it's not dope? Why? Yeah. Burn I feel, it. I feel like that's the thing about the childlike nature that you, you forget as you get older because the things that fascinate you as a kid, are, there's all kinds of things that fascinate you, and you pursue those things, and usually I feel like growing up is learning that like you didn't need that, or that you want something else, in a way. Is, is that making sense at all? Yeah, but throughout my life, the best adults are always the people, like, as a kid, like, the best adults are people who weren't like that, you yeah. know? No, like, of course. My favorite adults as a kid were yeah. like, like my aunt. They were keeping the channel open. Yeah. Right? Like, they were creative. They were interesting. They knew how to have fun. They yeah. could, like, play. They knew exactly. how to play. Exactly, right? Yeah. My aunt, um, Lisa, she's the best. She's TikTok famous, but she's just hilarious. Um, but my mom is always like, there's something with you and Corey. My, my, she's my cousin. And she's like, I think it's Lisa that you guys are so selfish. And I'm like, what? But I think it, Lisa was just always a fun adult. You know what I mean? <laughs> and she's like, do whatever you want. Be yourself. Yeah. yeah. And it's like. I feel like other people in life don't really embrace that. And I honestly look for people mm. like that in my life. It's like, do you pass the vibe check? Yeah. Like, cause, so, we're, cause, cause we're not gonna vibe if oh you don't pass God, it. Oh my God, yes. We could like go on about that. Right? It, see, it seems like, so, okay. That's something that's important to me. And I have my own kind of reasons for why it's important to me as an artist. I'm curious to know, as an artist, do you feel like you could work with people that don't pass the vibe check? Yeah, and I think that that's, that's where the insincerity mm. shows up in my work, where it's like, okay, you are serving this function, and I have to be like... You become a servant. Well, it's, I feel like it's mutually beneficial, right? Because, mm. like, let's say this person isn't vibing on the same frequency as me, but they provide value in a sense, and, like, I'm paying them or whatever. Like... You don't, I understand You're that you- are paying them? Yeah, I was like, I understand that you can't understand the, the depth and the breadth of like how I show up and like, it might even scare you. So like, we don't have to go that deep and that's okay. You know what I mean? Mm. Some people don't be ready. I, I'm, you lost me. Really? Yeah. I guess it's like, like the concept of like industry friends, right? Mm. Like, there's certain people that you meet in the industry where you're like, oh, okay, cool. Like we can actually like hang out like, and like vibe. And other people it's like, okay, well like, I know you do this, but based on like kind of the data I've taken in over my life, I typically don't like, relationships with people like this don't usually work for me because your mindset, like, mm. you know, I, I think about things like that. Yeah. It's like, so it's like, so it's like, yeah, like we could, let's, let's just be cool. You yeah. have to go that so deep because I'm going to scare you. Compromise though, in, in your no. What's like? Where's what? Why? Why? Yeah. Why? Why? You know? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I believe you should be so bold, right? I think you should. You're there's only one you. Yeah. And like anything that tries to deny your you-ness, throw it out. Like, like limit your exposure. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, Even if I, it's necessary, like limit your exposure. So let's bring that to to, to the art then. Um, God. Okay. So we talked about being insincere with the work, and that seemed to go back to this fundamental, like being true to who you are as a person, categorically in your life, it must happen in order for it to show up in your work. Do you feel that's true? Yeah. Um... I feel but like if you're not completely real in your life, you can't be real in your work or do you think you can do both? Well, I mean, I feel like I feel like it's all like facets, right? But 
for the most part, I think one should be able to embrace their instincts because your instincts are essentially what gets you to where you are. So if you're around people that are questioning your instincts and mm-hmm. don't necessarily get it, they're not, they're not a vibe fit. See, like when you're a kid, you know that so well. Like kids know, they all they have is instinct. They haven't learned anything yet, right? Yeah. And learning is just like, in a lot of ways, it can just be reprogramming, like, from yeah. your sort of innocent state. Because, like, that's what the channel is. It's like, it's like childlike wonder, keeping it alive. But that isn't yeah. always. It's like curiosity. It usually seems to be founded in curiosity. Yeah. Life goes to extreme limits to take it from you, you know? Yeah. I've had these moments, and I have these moments in life when I'm just so confident in myself, my instincts. And it's like, I just know, yeah, I'm me. Of course. <laughs> have you seen me? Like, I can handle anything. I'm like what a, an apex predator, a human being. Like, we're dangerous individuals to encounter, right? Mm. Way more scary than lions or tigers, in my opinion. Anyway. So I don't I'm like I'm it. pretty scared Listen, of like felines. Uh, the point is you 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 are a force to be reckoned with within your own life. And we often can forget that. We often can feel like we're bystanders to our own our own lives. Uh, but you are a force to be reckoned with. Anyway, so we're talking about the curiosity that children have, instincts. This is why I say trust your instincts, because you're you. Like yeah. you're a force to be reckoned with. You're gonna get it done, you'll figure it out. Yeah. You know, like I would yeah. I, I, I think you should trust your instincts. You've got a whole, you're you. You can do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And I want, I feel like everyone should know that they're them. And like, we all bring something special to the party. So like, and I think the way that you can identify that is like things that you just kind of naturally have a knack for. So like, if you're good at arguing, maybe you need to like go to law school or something or like, do something to where, like, you can, like, use that ability to argue to help others. Like, there's so many ways, like, where, you know, even growing up, like, that example of arguing. Like, mm. your parents would be like, you're argumentative, be quiet. But it's like, well, I mean, you're kind of stating facts. Like, mm-hmm. maybe you have a knack for this. Yeah. Like, maybe put them in the debate club. Like, yeah. And so that's how you find yourself. I feel like I had a lot of opportunity as a kid to, like kind of navigate um, different experiences and figure out what I liked. So like, which also informs my work and like my sort of intersectional existence. Cause like I was in band and student council president and like, just like everything, the tennis club, the golf team. Talk to them. Just, like, you know, it's just like things, things, things. A's, you did good at a lot of things, I'm assuming. Yeah, but things I was bad at I don't typically like, I don't like being yeah. bad at things, but um, Man, if I'm bad, if, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, damn, why am I bad at this? It's and, the worst feeling. Yeah. Um, like, but I really like it. I want to be good. See, if I feel like that about the thing I'm bad at, then I'll, I'll continue to try to get good. Yeah. But and like, then you get good. Yeah. That's what happens. That's how anybody gets good. Surprise. That's how you get good at anything is you just do it a lot. Yeah. Repetition. Yeah. Duh. That, a lot duh. of people do, don't get the duh no. from that. Yeah. A lot of people they really don't know how to do anything. Out. They don't know how to work. They just, I'm like, you can't be a rock star unless you get up and play like Hendrix. Yeah. Sorry. They you just think you pop stage. out with it, you know? Yeah. And if you're just bad at out. it, just do it a lot. You'll get good at it. Just shred. Mm-hmm. Just shred, bro. What else are you going to do with your life? <laughs> yeah. What else? Come on. You're just going to live and burn up fuel into the atmosphere and then die. We're all going to forget about you. Yeah, you only got 100 years. Yes. So. Do something. Chop, chop. Okay, so I feel like we're getting to a good conclusion here. I like about that. that, right? Yeah. Just be dope. Make your stuff. And shut up. Yeah. And no, I'm just harder. kidding. Uh, so be uh, nice to yourself, really. Yeah, we talked. And about take that. and take the time to like learn about yourself. Like life doesn't really give us that opportunity, and it isn't incentivized by society, which sucks. But sorry, I keep moving the mic. Uh. <laughs> I wanted to introduce yeah. you to these. Oh, whoa. What's this? These are, well, I don't really know what to call them. They're things I put on my face. Um, and they allow me to see the channel. Ooh. Or at least visualize aspects of it. Would you mind if I no, go have for your permission it. to put them on? 
Yeah, put it on. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. Would you uh, do this with me, this yeah. exercise? Yeah. I'll need your participation for it to work. And All right. cooperation, actually. I'm here, I'm here. It's, it's very much predicated on your uh, openness to the channel. Okay. Okay. So can you see me? Mm-hmm. You can still see me? I can see all kinds of things about you. No, but can you actually see me, though? Of course. Okay, so here's what, how it's going to work. I'm going to tell you things I see, and you have to give context to what I'm saying. Okay? Okay. These are things about you that I'm going to see. You will know what they are. Nobody else will know what they are. So you have to confirm what they are and explain them. Okay, sick. Okay, that's how we'll know that what, I, uh, what I'm seeing. Okay? Okay. I'm seeing a microphone. Yes. Okay. What does that mean to you? I said microphone. Could you describe that? Are you talking about the microphone in my hand or just are you, are you seeing? Uh, is that what makes sense to you? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, the confirmation I can see. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I see uh, the color red a lot. I like red. What's red? Why is red so... There's a lot of red I'm seeing. I like red. Red's cool. Okay. Um, so I guess that's probably why. Red, red's, red's cool. And, is that uh, your favorite color? Yeah, I like okay. red too because I got like I, I was cause studying Chinese. Interesting. I have, like Chairman Mao's little book. Okay. It's like a red book. But I just I just love red stuff. Oh well, well I'm seeing a lot. Of, clearly, I think, I think you're picking up. You're picking see, up on yeah. something. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I'm seeing tears. Tears. Yeah, I'm seeing tears, like teary eyes. Hmm. I cry at like random shit. Like, I'll see a cloud and be like, it's so beautiful. When was the last time you were crying? I think it was when I saw a cloud, and I was like, it's was so this beautiful. Was like days ago? Was it recent? Yeah, but, like, I wasn't, like, crying. Like, it was, like, okay. a happy cry, you know? Wow. So you have, like, a uh, – there's clearly – I be living life for yeah, real. You, you know? literally are crying. Just That just happens. That doesn't I mean, – a lot of people, that's not usual. Anyway, I saw it. I have it. some clearly friends that I can't it. cry. That's really crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, let it out. Um, you have some – I'm trying to – is that what – it doesn't make sense. There's something that you're not showing me, and I don't know what it is. No, no, no. It's like inside you. Hmm. There's something that's you're not showing me. I don't know what it is, but if you would know what it is. I don't know. Huh. There's Are a you lot, hiding something? There's a lot of things in my head. Are, is there something that you're hiding right now? No. Okay. Okay. Well, then, then I wouldn't see it. If you were hiding it, I can't see it. I couldn't see it, I thought. Well, damn. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what else do I see here? Um, I see. I see a phone. I'm seeing a phone. It's like got messages all over it. It's like blowing up. I get a lot of texts. You get texts a lot. Yeah. Your phone blow up. Oh, hey. Um, I get a lot of texts, yeah. It's like a phone like vibrating like and just going Yeah, I I have a toxic relationship with my phone. Seriously? Wow. I'm I like I'm that. like get away from me. Dang. And people are always like, Do you just ha did you put me on Do Not Disturb? And I'm like, the world is on Do Not Disturb. Like yeah. it's just too much. Yeah. And like it's like sensory overload. Cause it's like I'm getting messages about the magazine and people in my life. And like, I just need a, I just need a clone to just yeah. handle my phone only. A clone. A that clone. Seems kind of. Not, a clone specifically for my phone. That feels kind of like slavery to me, but okay. Um, Says the guy that wants a servant. That's not better than a. It's better than a clone. Slave clone. Well, a clone doesn't get a choice. But the clone All right, would back be to mean. the thing. Hold on, I have one more thing to see, and then you have to ask me some questions. Um, I see that you're. Right arm is sitting in your lap. It's my left arm. Okay. Well, I can't see shit then. <laughs> All right. It's, uh, thank you for that. 
it's going to be, uh, yeah, no, so, so ask me some questions. Oh, yeah, so I have some questions for you. Yeah. And this is kind of like a little rapid fire. So try not to think about it too much. Just, okay. Just speak from your heart. Okay. I'll keep the channel open. Um, what's been your favorite age so far? Uh, 2016, however old I was then. I love 2016, that too. That was my favorite year. What was it about 2016? I don't know. I think I was 24 in 2016? Yeah. 25, maybe? I turned, I don't know. Anyway, I saw, I beatboxed for Skrillex and was around the coolest people. I was a huge fan of, like, a bunch of musicians, Moses Sumney. I was a big fan of him, and I got to hang out with all these musicians and artists, and it was a big moment in my life. That's so cool. Yeah, that's when I bought my Corvette. It was awesome. It sounds homies. like 2016 was that lit. Was, that was the year that I met Will. Aw. Yeah, a bunch of other friends in Tulsa. That's good. Um, okay. Also, Life of Pablo, that album came out 2016. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Yeah. Um, how often do you floss? Uh, daily. Are you like every a night. nighttime, morning, every night? Every night? Sends like 2000, probably 19, probably 20, 2018. 2018, I had a new, one New Year's resolution to floss every day, and I've done it since. Good. Okay, so when you floss, I, now we're going to get a little deeper. Yeah. What kind of floss do you like? Because I'm kind of like. I kind of like the hard shit. Really? Yeah. I feel like I'm getting in there better when it hurts. Have you ever tried the one with like a little cloth on it? It's like. <laughs> What? It's like a floss with like this cloth. I'm no. deep on the, I'm deep on the teeth. <laughs> no, people really can't just handle floss anymore. Well, Come I Come on, snowflakes. Can you not handle s floss anymore? Well, it's, it's I had that when I had braces, so oh. it would like it would like get Please all don't. the gross stuff out of your braces. Okay, I it just really gets Clearly, I did not have braces. <laughs> I think you can tell. I personally like the little green thing. It's like the stick. Oh, yeah, that's a, a lot little. of plastic waste though. Sorry, not environmental. Damn. Yeah. Sorry, Earth. No, that's why I don't do that. I'm, I'm without sin. Wait, I can isn't isn't floss plastic too? It is, unless you get the you can get like organic stuff, that decomposes. It's compostable. Okay. Just is fiber. is is your bed made right now? Uh, probably not, because. Zia was in it when I left, and she usually doesn't make the bed, so no, so, probably not. So, but it, if I leave it, always. So you're the bed maker. I am the bed maker. Mm, that's cool. What is your hidden talent? They're not hidden. I tell everybody everything I can do all the time. Yeah, I've seen you like spin on your head and shit. Yeah, break dance, skateboard. Uh, I can see the channel now with that stuff. That's pretty hidden. Haven't showed anybody that yet. Okay, last question of the round. Um. What do you regret spending uh, your money on? What's a, what's like a regret? You were like, damn. I should, I, a bunch I, of like go fast parts for my car, Corvette. Interesting. What do you mean go fast parts? Like Just like stuff that makes it faster. It's like not that it didn't come with. Like upgrades. Oh, uh, like Super mods? Good. Mods, yeah. Hmm. Oh, the old mods. Yeah. I saw this guy. It was horrible. I don't know. Sorry to sidetrack this, but... I saw this guy going down uh, by the BOK Center, and he had this huge truck, and it said something about Trump. I don't like trucks. It said something about Trump on the back, but his truck was Can like say that? was like Word? poop. <laughs> his, his truck was like pooping ink. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, is this a mod? Like this yes. person, this person's yes. a bad person. Yes. Like yes, it's called so literally. Yeah. It's like this Trump truck, yes. and it's like Shooting black, like black shit smoke. coming out. And I'm like. This is what's wrong with America right here. What Yo. is this? <laughs> this is killing me because it's as a car guy, I know exactly what, what it is. What is that? And I'm like, what does the rest of the world think this is? It's some weird thing with diesel trucks. First of all, trucks are lame. I don't like trucks. I'm a sports car guy. I want to go fast. I want it to look, it needs to look sexy. Trucks are like dumb shapes. I'm like, that shit looks ugly, man. Anyway, it doesn't have Kurt. Anyway, whatever. What's what is? Yeah, the... it's just some thing that like these guys who have like busted knuckles and like neck beards because they work on. They're like working man, like oh. charred trucks and toes and stuff, and then toes stuff. Diesels have a lot of torque, so they can like pull uproot trees and shit. So if you're like a real working motherfucker, you want a diesel, some big ass truck with four by four, heavy duty shit. The thing about diesel trucks is they spit out nasty, like, fumes. It's gross. But some people are gross. They're fucking knuckle-dragging, 
cavemen, and but, they love that shit. It's like, yeah, pollute this planet, bitch. I'm gonna but, tear your tree up. But it's this just, wasn't uh, just like anyway. So they, they tune it to make it make. Oh, okay, they do it to make <laughs> yeah. it do that. Yeah, a lot of people make their cars louder too, which to me is stupid. I'm like, my shit is loud because it's fucking fast, bro. Because I've got just it just is like that. It's right. a Corvette. I can't make it any quieter. Yeah. Okay. Your shit, on the other hand, is weak, and you're just <coughs> making it loud. There's no. There's just don't. Get out of here. Don't don't just make noise because you have to. I'm I literally have my shit muffled down so that it's not too loud and it still will blow your shit out because it's a fucking Corvette. Wow. Yeah. So if your shit is loud because it's a Lambo, okay. But if it's some shitty car and the same thing is like if your shit spits out black smoke because it's a real working machine and it can't, you know, this car was going like 15 it to make some make noise. Grow up. Yeah. And and. Give a fuck about the environment, because we only get one Earth. Some people suck. One love. Yeah, but that's good. Uh, that was the last of my questions. And Sweet. Well, yeah. I hope I answered it. Uh, so, yeah, last thing. <laughs> I, want, I want to know what has been inspiring you. What is some work that has been on your mind that you're, you've been into? Like my work or something Just I've any, like seen? Uh, somebody else's stuff. Could be anything. Hmm. Movie, music, poem. I've just been really inspired by uh, the idea of, like, stillness because I'm such an ADHD, bing, 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 you know? Oh, that blowing up phone, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's like, I don't know, reclaiming my time in a sense. And, like, it might be bad that, like, I'm... I don't feel bad that I'm doing it, you know? I don't feel bad mm-hmm. about. Uh, well, let's. I want to know. Okay, so artistically, right? Well, the, so the original I think, question. I, I think that also okay. encompasses my art as well, right? Because it's like. So stillness, quietness is the is the creative inspiration you've been. Pursuing. Yeah, because they, especially the way things are now with like TikTok and like if you're an artist and like you're seeing other people's art and like it's just all this kind of inundation. So I think that like what's been inspiring me is just kind of finding stillness and like the beauty in everyday life, you know, Mm. that's kind of what I've been on lately. That's some, that sounds like some spiritual type stuff. Yeah. But it it informs your whole art ethos existence. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at though. Nice. (laughs) Well, I'm excited um, for this and uh, yeah. The more episodes we're yeah, going to do. Yeah, we're going to have some more. So, before <laughs> we conclude, we're going to welcome our... This is also a moment now for you to uh, plug whatever you got going on. Um, Yeah, so um, the Acelet store will be coming spring, summer 2024. So be on the lookout for that. There'll be a lot of uh, hot young adult fashions coming through and... Uh, it's just going to be a good place for the community to kind of link up and do things. So, yeah, that's kind of the big thing we got on the back burner. And, you know, subscribe and follow Acelet on all of our platforms. com, Instagram, Zine, Everything's Zine. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Okay. I want to thank you again for being such a great guest. I'm True Sundardi. We have the Manta Rays that are going to play now, live from the parlor. This show has been called The Channel. And remember to keep the channel open. Let's go, Manta Rays. Woo!
שאהובה, Fucking God. 